Here's something called false hellebore. I saw this in the mountains all the time, never knew what it was. Now I know, false hellebore. It is toxic, every part of the plant. Don't eat it. It's not gonna help you out. This one's in pretty bad shape. They typically grow around wetter areas. And there is a creek over there. False hellebore, or Veritrum viridae, has other common names, such as Indian poke and corn lily. However, those names can be easily confused with other plants, so I'd stick with false hellebore. The Veritrum genus has several different species, including Veritrum californicum, album, nigrum, woody eye, and several others. All are toxic, although the chemical compounds in them can vary slightly. The roots have five to 10 times the concentration of toxins as other parts of the plant, and they become less concentrated as the plant matures. In Utah, you will not find edible lookalikes of this plant, so always avoid it. You'll find it in wet areas in the mountains between 52 and 8,200 feet. It has been responsible for many livestock deaths and poisonings in humans. Chemicals found in false hellebore that are harmful are known as steroidal alkaloids, primarily protoveratrine, veratrodine, and gervine. The primary action of these chemicals is to raise intracellular sodium concentrations. So what the heck does that mean? Well, it means first you'll have nausea and vomiting, and then your breathing, blood pressure, and heart rate will slow, potentially leading to death. If your blood pressure is too low, your heart can't effectively move blood around, and your cells are gonna starve of oxygen. Should you find yourself poisoned by this plant, what medical staff will try and do is increase your blood pressure, likely with vasopressors such as epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. The chemicals in false hellebore were experimented on in the 1950s as an antihypertensive, but were discontinued due to some adverse side effects. Similar compounds are found in another toxic Utah plant, the death camas, often confused with wild onion and sago lily. I'll be discussing that in a future video. If you appreciate this information, please remember to like the video. This is the first in an informational series on wild Utah plants. Until next time, this is Derek reminding you, you're working too hard. Thanks for watching.